Okay, so let's say we wanted to chain two safes together. So what would we need to do? Well, we would need to take one CPS operation. Let's say I have define and chain them together. What do I do? I take, I have a, an operation one and I have an operation two, right? So what do I need to do? Well, what is my operation one? Operation one is going to be something. It's going to return an operation itself. So if it's going to return, so now I want to write a CPS operation. That's the case. Then it needs to be something that takes expects an okay and an error. If it expects an okay and an error, what I need it to do is What I needed to do is I need to somehow redefine what should happen. Okay, so OP1 should take something that is an OK, and it should do something else if it isn't. Um, so if the operation one throws an error, where should this error go? Well, if it is an error, then it should go to whatever thing I gave it here as input, right? So what if I give it okay here so if i give it okay here i wouldn't be chaining things at all right i wouldn't be calling op2 um so what that would be doing is just running op1 as is so let's see let me do safe chain now i want to do Vision zero, oh, actually, and one. Then I want to get the return value of that and take that value. And with that value, what I want to do is I want to do another safe division of that value divided by two. This is what I would like to do. Now, what this is going to return is a CPS operation. Call that O. Now, what I do is O with print A. Let me do run find run CPS. Just take an operation O and calls O with print A print error. Simple. Here, do is run s yes. Okay, so in this case, I got division zero. If I run this in mode, at print OK. So now, what happens if I run the whole thing? I do run. Yes, I would expect it to turn the first. So let me do. Oh. Yeah, so the first operation is dividing ten by one, which gives you two, so five. So we can see we didn't do anything with the results. Okay, so so this is just calling operation one. So we know that the return value is going to end up in this function that I give it here. So one thing I could do is I could define my own continuation, my continuation. What my continuation is going to be doing is it takes a result, some result. What do I do with that result? I want to chain it to operation two. So I want I want to return the value to operation two, which means oh, I, the thing I want to do is take my two, and opt is this continuation thing, right? So this should take the result, result x, result x, I'm r is whatever value I was that 
should return define station. Okay, and now my CPS, I want to run my CPS operation with which um, result and which, so it's going to be something here. Error is going to be. And what is the result? Where is the return value? The return value I want to return to. Okay. I want the, the result of the second operation to be sent to OK. The error to be sent. So instead of sending result, I, I continue. What my continuation does is whatever OP1 returns, it will send it to my continuation. My continuation takes that result, feeds it to OP2, to operation 2, and that should create a CPS operation. And I take that CPS operation and I pass OK and error. That should potentially divide 5 by 2. Error. Have found it in the top. So. Got five divided by two. Let's try to explain what we did. So this is actually I should call this bind. So how do we bind two two things together? What do we do? We have two. CPS operations. This is my return and this is my error. If I want to control what OP1 returns, I have to create my own function. If it there if there's an error, it should re, re, reach out to the standard error. So what my continuation does is it takes the result that was sent by OP1 and feeds it into OP2, and that creates a CPS operation. Then I take that CPS operation, and I call it with OK and error. Okay, so now let's see if I get division by zero, what happens? I get that print error was called. Basically, you now know CPS bind. So another thing we might want to do, so we we basically came up with CPS bind. Um, so what are the other operations? So the basic idea is that with CPS, CPS actually represents a monad. And what I ch showed you now is just how you would go about and implement continuation passing style bind, which is just another way to say, how do I chain two operations together? The way I do it is with this code, right? And now, since we have this, now we can write really cool things, which is one thing we can do is we can define return. So what does return do? Return just you want to specify something to be returned that is just the same as that's a, an effectful operation what does it do well it takes that value and it sends it to the return function so one thing we could do is we could find o we want to save division. And then what I want to do is I want to return that value. Okay. What is this going to do? It's going to take this result. It's going to send it to this function. That function returns another. That function returns a CPS operation, which is then has to run CPS. So similarly, we could define raise. So what does raise do? Raise ideally represents 
what does return mean? Return means just calling a function ret, uh, the function ret passing a value. What does raising an exception mean? Well, that's just calling function error with passing a value. For instance, if I want to take a value and I just want to, let's say I don't care about what this value is, I want to raise, run a, a continuation, what I want to do is, I want to raise an exception after doing the division. I do raise, see what happens. Close this. I I see that print error was called. It was called because raise. What it does is it calls error. Done. Next, what we want to do is we want to try, and try is beautiful. Let me paste it. Okay, so this corresponds to try catch in a regular exception. As we will see, it's it works almost the same as bind, but instead of using the OK, it uses the error channel. It does. So instead of say I want to call this code, right? As you know, actually let me pause and copy paste the note. Okay, so I pasted here the our our good old macro for do. Now what I want to do is I want to do do and It clear okay so if I run it this way maybe it's a bit clear so if I run raise error I'm uh, just using the do notation what I did was I did a division I assigned that to X and then I raised an exception and as you can see I got print error if I do instead return X look at what happens it returns 5 I do x plus 10. Okay. And if here, oops, say I just do this, happens. I got an exception. Let's see if this is actually false. So we see that this line is not called. If I comment this out, then this line is called. Oh. Oh. Sorry. Need to do this trick. <laughs> So the reason is display is not a um, effectful, sorry, it's not a CPS operation. So to convert it, you have to do. So if I do the return, now we can see I ran first this and then I ran that. Now let's do instead. So it's a bit confusing that it, it says return and return. What it's, what this is doing is actually sending Void and ignoring like if we move this code here now it actually stops doesn't run so now let's revisit what we did uh, what return does is just calls the return callback what raise does is just it calls the error callback. What CPS bind does, so the bind for continuation passing style does, is depicted in this idea, on, on this image. So operation one either sends an error or it sends an OK, right? If you set operation one returns a value that is OK, then it's threaded to operation two. If that operation two then returns something, it goes to return. 
But if operation one sends an error, it goes directly to error. If operation two sends an error, it goes directly to error. So this is bind. So now let's look at what how we implement try catch. The way we implement try catch is the dual of bind. So you have an operation one. If the operation one succeeds, you just call it because you did you try to do something, you try to do a one and O one was successful. You don't need to run catch. If instead O one gets an exception, what do you do? You either run the catch block and if the catch block is successful you run you return that value but if you raise another exception you go to error as you can see i really like these two diagrams because they clearly explain how if you understand continuation passing style even if you don't understand this code and you don't have to what i want you to get from this uh, short video is that you can specify control flow using continuation passing style and it's very easy to define try catch and return using this monadic cps and another very interesting thing is the dual behind behind the duality behind bind and try catch so what try catch is doing whenever you see try catch in your code internally what that is doing is just a bind and what bind is doing is what you already know so I think that is a very nice summary of how to understand control flow with the monadic behavior. Basically, how do you compose two things that may throw an exception? That's what you should do. So what I'm saying is, if you have two operations that may raise an exception, you have one good path, which is both run together, or you have operation one, throws an exception, it goes to error, or operation two throws an exception, goes to error. You understand this way is pretty easy to understand, right? It seems almost too obvious. Um, so what try catch is doing is if operation one runs successful, that is the reverse. It's kind of like the exception. So if operation one succeeds, you're done. You exit. You don't need to run operation two. You run operation two, you only run operation two if you get an error. But that is exactly the same thing that is happening in reverse for bind. So then this is just an example of what I just wrote. And then the last thing I wanted to tell you, and I don't want to spend too much time here, I basically just want to make sure you know about this, is that there is a notion there is a actually a first class primitive of of this concept continuation that is known at skull cc and it's kind of like a mind bend to understand it's, it's really non-trivial uh, but the basic idea is that whenever you have a function call and you say that you want to do call cc what that does, it kind of rewrites your code and put it in, puts it in this way, which is to say the code that surrounds this call CC, the code that surrounds it, becomes a function. It becomes this. It kind of reverts um, the code that surrounds a function call from the code that you have. And with that, you get that inversion of control. And you can do many crazy things. And if you follow this link, you will see insanity. So have fun with it.